It's now my pleasure to introduce our speaker for our commencement exercise this morning, Dr. Andrew Hugini, Jr., President of Alabama A&M University. Dr. Hugini is the 11th President of Alabama A&M University. He earned his bachelor's and master's degree from South Carolina State University and a doctorate in higher education from Michigan State University. He has presented worldwide in many different venues and is an author of three books on mathematics. Prior to his appointment at Alabama A&M, he served as president of South Carolina State University. He's held other positions like executive vice president and chief operating officer, assistant vice president, and a number of career ladder positions that have led him to the current position that he holds now. Since his appointment at Alabama A&M, the university's accreditation with SACS has been reaffirmed. The financial status of the university has been strengthened. And that certainly takes great leadership skills during these dangerous economic times. Dr. Hugini worked with the Department of Education to finance a $96 million financing agreement, the largest agreement in the history of the United States Department of, of Education and it was used to refinance existing debt and to construct a new 600-bed student residence hall. Under Dr. Hugini's leadership, enrollment has increased, and last year in 2015, they had the largest freshman graduating class in the history of the institution, almost 1,500 freshmen coming into Alabama A&M. Under his leadership, he has added 10 new major program areas. Private funding has increased uh, under his leadership, and they've just completed a $20 million fundraising uh, campaign. It goes without saying that while Dr. Hugini was uh, at South Carolina State, he has received many, many honors and awards, but. I suspect one of the ones he's most proud of is his construction of a 755-bed residence hall at South Carolina State was named in his honor as the Andrew Hugini Jr. Living and Learning Complex. Certainly an honor indeed. Also under his leadership, he has reached out around the state of Alabama and around the nation and created many, many partnerships. Lawson State Community College is the beneficiary of one of those partnerships that he will share a little bit more with you. But Alabama A&M will be moving from one of their programs, not the college, Dr. Hugini. Uh, the programs will be moving to Lawson State Community College and will be offering baccalaureate degrees in a number of curriculum areas, thereby reducing the, the times that people will need to drive to Huntsville to further their education. They'll be able to do it on the campus of Lawson State Community College, and then eventually graduate programs. And so we think that's going to be a significant educational benefit for the residents of this metropolitan area. Dr. Hugini is married, and his wife, uh, Abigail Hugini, they've been married for more than 40 years. They have an adult son and daughter uh, and uh, a grandson. So without any further ado, it's my pleasure this morning to present to you the distinguished president of Alabama A&M University, Dr. Andrew Hugini, Jr. Dr. Hugini. The essence of destiny. 
Watch your thoughts, for they become words. Choose your words, for they become actions. Understand your actions, for they become habits. Study your habits, for they will become your character. Develop your character, for it becomes your destiny. Good morning. Good morning. To the members of the Board of Trustees, to President Ward, to First Lady Ward, distinguished members of the dais, administrators, faculty, staff, students, alumni, guests, but especially to this, the 2016 spring graduating class of Lawson State Community College. I bring you greetings from the Hill, from Alabama Agricultural and Mechanical University. First, let me take this opportunity to thank you so very much, President Ward, for the introduction. And I also want to commend President Ward and the leadership here at Lawson State Community College. I want to commend you for the wonderful accolades that you continue to receive to be designated among America's 50 best community colleges and to be recognized by the White House as a champion of change. We thank you and we salute you in your accomplishments. Second, I'm delighted to be here this morning as our two great institutions embark upon this wonderful partnership. Beginning in the fall of 2016, Lawson State students will be able to complete the baccalaureate degree right on, the, on your campus from Alabama A&M University. Therefore, I'm here to say welcome to our new Bulldogs. <laughs> and third, the principal reason I'm here is to have the opportunity to formally congratulate the class of 2016. You made it. We are proud of you. And you should be proud of yourselves. I know that for many of you, this journey has been filled with much sacrifice, endurance, but you did not give up. And for that, we are proud of you. And we say, congratulations. Would you join with me in congratulating the class of 2016? Graduates, outside of this gathering today, a whole new world awaits you. You have learned much here at Lawson State University that will help you on that journey. Some of you will be embarking on new careers for the first time. Some of you will be continuing professional careers. Some of you will be continuing education at a college or a university. However, each of you must navigate this journey that we call life. Up to this point, your parents, your instructors, yes, even Lawson State, they have helped you to fill in the blank for this test that we call life. But from now on, from now on, the responsibility of filling in that blank for the test of life, it's up to you. And so my message to you this morning is quite simple. It's your life. From now on, you fill in the blank. If you look in the definition for life in the dictionary, it gives you a couple of them. Life is usefulness. Life is another chance. Life is existence with a purpose. By way of an acrostic, let me just share with you a couple of hints about how you might fulfill and live and meet this journey we call life. The first letter in the word life is L. L reminds us of love. You need to love yourself and believe in yourself. You love yourself by the way that you carry yourself. We call that self-esteem. Muhammad Ali, the greatest boxer that ever lived, he often heard him exclaim, I am the greatest. And here's what he says. To be a great champion, you must believe that you are the best. 
And if you're not, just pretend that you are. <laughs> but just as your beliefs can move you forward believing that you are the best, your disbeliefs can hold you back. What are those disbeliefs? That's that committee in your head that keeps telling you that you're not worthy, that you can't do it. That's those doubting friends that you have around you, telling you that you won't make it, you won't be able to. But I suggest that you heed the advice of Christopher Gardner in the epic movie Pursuit of Happiness. And here's what he says. You got a dream. You got to protect it. People can't do something themselves. They want to tell you that you can't do it. But if you want to do something, go get it done, period. Don't ever let anyone tell you you can't do something. Yes, you can. So L stands for love and believing in yourself. The next letter is I. I stands for individual responsibility. I will say to you that in the end, you, you are in charge of your life. No one can determine your success or your failure but you. It doesn't matter how extensive your training, it doesn't matter how wise the advice, at the end of the day, you're responsible. On this journey that we call life, we don't have a substitute runner. You must take ownership for your responsibility. The operative word here is I. I think William Ernest Henley in the poem Invictus, the last stanza says it best. It matters not how straight the gate, how charged with punishment the scroll. Here's the important part. I. I am the master of my faith. I, I am the captain of my soul. I is the most important word in the English language because our success or our failure begins with I. Even the Bible reminds us of the importance of I when it says that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Therefore, you and you alone are in charge of what happens to you. Don't blame others for your shortcomings. Blame yourself. Take full responsibility and watch what happens. I also stands for integrity. Integrity means to be of good character, to be upright in speech, morally correct. It means to have honesty, fairness, sensitivity, respect for one's fellow man, to live by the principles in the Bible. That's what it means by integrity. Our news is replete with stories of individuals who compromised their integrity. And we have witnessed that in politics, in business, and in the personal lives of people that we look up to. So I encourage you to be honest and principled in everything that you do, on your jobs, in your homes, and your dealing with others, in good times and in bad times. Don't be tempted to do something that is improper or dishonest just to get ahead. Be certain that you can be trusted even when no one is looking. Keep in mind that old adage that still rings true today. What you do in the dark will come to light. The next letter is F. F reminds us of faith. Faith comes from believing in a higher being, believing that someone bigger than you and I are in control of our circumstances. Faith helps us to hope for things that we haven't seen. Faith helps us to believe that it will happen. With a little bit of faith, we can move those mountains out of our lives, those problems that we encounter. With faith, there is nothing that is impossible. In the book, Adversity Quotient, author Paul Stoltz concludes that the secret to success is how you respond in situations of adversity and in time of stress and strain. He said it isn't always your IQ, your smartness and your intelligence that puts you on the top, but quite often it is your AQ, your adversity quotient, that leads to your success. He talks about and makes the analogy of climbing a mountain. 
And he says there are three different people that are mountain climbers. At the bottom of the ladders are those that are quitters. Those are individuals who just opt out. They cop out. They drop out. Then a little higher on the ladder are the campers. They start out with a bang, but then they reach a plateau and they become complacent. But high on the top of that ladder are the climbers. These are the people who live life to the fullest. They are accustomed to turning obstacles into opportunities. They continue to embrace and overcome challenges. Climbers have faith. Faith that if they just keep on, they'll reach the top. F also stands for friends. Most of us want to believe that we are completely free in all senses of the world. word. We make our own decisions. We are in charge of how we feel. We are responsible for what results that we have for those actions. But the truth of the matter is, the people we surround ourselves with will define who we become. And Assyrian Proverbs puts it this way, tell me who your friends are, and I'll tell you who you are. Tell me who your friends are, and I'll tell you who you are. Thus, our success or our failure is a large measure determined by our friends. Friends can either pull us up or they can pull us down. Class of 2016, please, Please be extremely careful of the friends and the post that you place on social media. <laughs> know that there is no delete button once the post has been made. There's no expiration date to the post and you have no control over where it will surface or when it will surface. Now, I'm sure that those of you who have followed the NFL draft are very familiar with what happened to Laramie Tunsil. Here was a young man that should have been drafted in the top three. Fortunately, he did at least go in round 13 because what happened was a post that he made a post of him smoking marijuana with a gas mask happened to surface at just the wrong time. So please, young people, be careful what you post. Even today, as you apply for jobs, many companies would like to have and require access to your social media. They want to know the messages that you are sending, the video and the pictures that you are posting, being posted about you from you and your friends. So I caution you, do not let your friends and your social media be your downfall. The last letter is E. E is for education. A Chinese proverb says, if you plan for a year, sow a seed. If you plan for a decade, plant a tree. But if you plan for a century, you educate the people. Education always has been germane to the development and advancement of society. However, due to the technological advances and influences today, education is more important than it's been in any other time in our history. Our world is dominated by technology. Our interactions of this world with one another are tied together by computers and tablets and smartphones. Education for the 21st century, where information creation and discovery are taking place faster than we can bring them into print, will require that each of you become lifelong learners. But fear not, despite the rapid development that has occurred, there is still much to be done. The greatest poem has yet to be written. The cure for cancer and AIDS has yet to be found. Racism is still alive and well. Children still lack the basic needs and necessities of life. Our educational system is still underfunded. We expect you, class of 2016, 
to become the professors, the engineers, the physicians, the researchers that will find a cure for diseases such as hypertension, diabetes, sickle cell anemia, to become the college presidents and elected officials who will enact laws that positively impact our communities. And if you, by chance, are looking for an institution in which to further advance your education, I invite you to, to take a look at Alabama Agriculture and Mechanical University. All right. All right. Finally, E is for excuses, which are not acceptable. You can be anything you want if you set high standards of work and ethics for yourself. Dale Carnegie says this, most of the important things in the world have been accomplished by people who have kept on trying when there seemed to be no hope at all. Michael Jordan, considered to be the greatest basketball player of all time, 14-time All-Star, Olympic gold medal, league MVP, but he was cut from his high school basketball team. But he did not give up. With laser-like determination, he practiced and he practiced and he practiced. And even when he reached his perfection, here's what Michael Jordan said. I've missed more than 9,000 shots in my career. I've lost almost 300 games, 26 times. I've been trusted to take the game-winning shot, and I missed it. I failed over and over again in my life. But the reason I have succeeded is that I never gave up. Alex Haley wrote for eight long years the books on roots before it was published. Henry Ford failed in his early businesses. He went broke five times before he founded the successful Ford Motor Company. Harlan Sanders, who we, of course, associated with KFC, his recipe for chicken was rejected 1,009 times before a restaurant was willing to accept it. Thomas Edison failed 1,000 times in developing before he developed the light bulb. And then an Alabama native, Dr. Lonnie Johnson, he was told that he shouldn't aspire to be anything beyond a technician, but he was inspired by the story of a black inventor named George Washington Carver. Today he holds over 100 patents, the best of which is known as the super soaker, but it took him seven years to perfect and market it. The common thread among all of them was their unwillingness to give up, to throw in the towel, to make excuses. Instead, they followed the two rules of life. Rule number one, never give up. Rule number two, always follow rule number one, never give up. So in the end, class of 2016, we congratulate you. Remember that this is your journey in life, that life is about love, that you must love yourself and believe in yourself. Life is about individual responsibility. If it is to be, it is up to me. It's about integrity doing the right thing. It's about faith, that substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. It's about friends. Be careful who you surround yourself with. And please, please be mindful of social media. It's about education, that continuous quest for knowledge without making excuses, because you must be lifelong learners. If you do that, class of 2016, you will fill in the blank correctly for this test that we call life. Again, congratulations to you. God bless each of you. God bless Lawson State Community College, and God bless America. Now I have the opportunity to do a presentation of a meritorious achievement award to 
Dr. Andrew Hugini and would like to ask him if he would join me on the dais. Dr. Hugini, I want to thank you for uh, being with us today. We wanted to stop and recognize you for your hard work and dedication in continuing to move this state forward during some very difficult and hard economic times. It's my privilege and pleasure this morning on behalf of Lawson State Community College to present this plaque to you for outstanding service not only in Alabama but the southern region around the nation on the many boards that he serves on and in Huntsville, Alabama, and in particular to Alabama A&M. Congratulations.